Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has made it possible for us to be accepted in the beloved. I'm so grateful to God to come your way, for us to come your way this day. And I believe God that God has a word for you, a definite word for you, that will change your life forever. Please gather your loved ones as we hear God's word. Because every time God sends his word, there is always a definite word for everyone to encounter. Hallelujah. Praise God. Precious Father, we thank you. We want to appreciate you for this wonderful time. We want to appreciate you for our viewers all over the world. We want to thank you for bringing us again to share your word. He said, the entrance of your word give it life. And give it understanding to the simple. Let everyone receive their heart like children in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your word do in us what you've created the word to do. That at the end, we'll be blessed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. You, Open the eyes of everyone's understanding in the name of Jesus. We bless your name, Father. Speak through my vocal cord. Think through my mind and all of you and none of me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What a beautiful time to come again, to come your way, this lovely day that God has made. As David said, this is the day that God, the Lord God has made and will rejoice and be glad in it. In the kingdom of God, there is no sadness. So that is the wonderful thing about this kingdom of God that we belong to. And I believe God that as the word come your way this day, your life will never remain the same. Yeah. Join us in this wonderful journey with the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. This day will be shown on the caption, the greater one is in you. The greater one is in you. Lord. As we open the Bible to First John chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 1. John said, John the beloved, he said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world, hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of an antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. And verse 4, ye are of God, yeah. little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The greatness or greatness is not a function of height. Greatness is not a function of size. Greatness is not a function of your ability. But greatness is a function of who lives and dwell in you. Can I repeat that again? Greatness is not a function of size or height or your physical ability. Greatness is a function of who lives and dwells in you. He who dwells in you empowers greatness in you. The one who lives in you empowers greatness in you. So that's why greatness is not a function of height. It's not a function of size. It's a function of who lives in you. Like the scripture we just read in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. John the beloved said, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So, as a believer, when we appear, we are not appearing as one that is seemingly great. We appear as one who have a great God in us. God is the greatest. There is no comparison with our God. That's what that scripture says. Greater is he that is in you. If you are born again, the Bible says greater is he that is in you. You carry the God, the almighty God, the all-knowing God. The God that those things and it beats the imaginations of man. The all-powerful God. Yeah. The God that created the heavens and the earth. The God that never sleeps nor slumbers. 
the God that rules in the affairs of men, the almighty God, greater is he that is in you. That's why you need to ask yourself, have you been born again? Because if you are born again, greater is the one that is in you. You might not appear seemingly great, but the one that is in you is the great God. Is a great God above every other God. So greater is he that is in you. Oh, right now, people all over the world are being threatened. People are afraid. But as a believer, greater is he that is in you than the virus that is in the world, than the sickness and the disease that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you. You are not an ordinary man. Hallelujah. Oh, probably before you gave your heart to Christ, you were an ordinary person. But the day you gave your heart to Christ, you became a supernatural being. You became a supernatural being because you carry the wonderful and the great God in you. Can we read that verse of the scripture again in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4? It said, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you. I don't know what the problem is, but greater is he that is in you. I don't know what the circumstances are that is surrounding you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Praise God. So what are we saying? What makes a believer to appear so great is the greater one in them. I love how Paul put it in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Philippians 4 and verse 13. Paul was emphasizing this. In Philippians 4 and verse 13, he said, I can do, in the King James Version, I can do all things. Not some things, but all things. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I can do all things with, through Christ, which strengthens or strengthens me. God is the one that strengthens the believer. God empowers the believer to live the life that he has deposited in anyone that believes in Christ. Because the day you gave your heart to Christ, he came to reside in your inside. Yeah, so that is why Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Glory. I can do all things. There is nothing I cannot do because I carry the greater one in the inside of me. So divine strength is a force of greatness. Divine force or divine strength is a force of greatness. I repeat that again. Divine strength is a force of greatness. Mm. It is what stone an ordinary man into a supernatural man. I will repeat that again. It is what turns an ordinary person into a supernatural being. You are not an ordinary person as a child of God. What makes you supernatural being is because the greater one dwells in your inside. That's why Paul was saying that I can do, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So, I want us to read that scripture again from the Amplified Version. He said, I have strength for all things in Christ. Oh, yeah. I have strength, not I will have. I have now, present, I have strength, all things in Christ who empowers me. Who empowers me? I am ready for anything. I am ready for anything. Why? There is something in the inside that can stand the taste of time. That is why I say, I am ready for anything. And 
equal to anything right. through him who infuses mm -hmm. inner strength into me. Thank you, Jesus. As a child of God, as one born again, the day you gave your heart to Christ, there was an infusion of an inner strength. That inner strength is the power of God. Yeah. He said, infuses, who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Glory. <laughs> so having the greater one in you is all that you need to live a victorious life. You don't need too much. All you need is just the greater one. Because him in your inside is all that matters. Jesus Christ in you is all that you need. Thank you, Jesus. All that you need to live a victorious Christian life on earth was deposited in you the day you gave your heart to Christ. That's why Paul, I love to read the Philippian version again of Philippians 4 verse 13. I have strength for things in Christ. Are you feeling weak right now? Are you feeling depressed and you're about to give up? I'm telling you, God says, I have strength for all things in Christ. You have strength for all things. Don't throw in the tar. Don't give up because there is divine strength on your inside. Glory. Equal or more than what you are going through right now. For everything you are going through, there is divine strength you, to go through it. Because you've been equipped with divine strength. Hallelujah. And that's what makes the difference. That's what, that's what makes you victorious. In life pursuit, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. Please, this word is very, very powerful. Who empowers me? Who empowers me? Who infuses in me inner strength? So, Christ's sufficiency is where you find your sufficiency. Have you been feeling that you are not sufficient? But look inside of you. Look inward. There is something greater than what you are going through right now. It is called the divine strength of God, which is sufficient for you. Hallelujah. Paul was going through challenge in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And he beseeched the Lord. He said, try to beseech the Lord. And but God said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. I don't know what you are going through right now, but the grace of God is sufficient for you. Amen. So go through it. Whatever you are going through will pass. Amen. Because weeping men deal for a night, oh, but joy comes in the morning. So, don't throw in the tar. Yes, Don't give up because there is something in your inside that is greater than what you are going through. Like Paul, I have strength for all things in Christ. You have strength for all things in Christ who empowers you. Yeah. And therefore, you are ready for anything and equal to anything through him oh. who infuses inner strength into you. And because of that, you are self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Please get it very clearly. You are sufficient because of Christ's ability, Christ's sufficiency that is in you. That's why he said, when you go through waters, I'll be there. It will not overflow you. Amen. When you are in the fire, I'll be there. It will not burn you Amen. because of his in with you. It's not in with you to suffer with you. Is there to take you out of the problem. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise so Christ's sufficiency is enough. You don't need any other thing. All you need is Christ. All you need is the greater one, the inside of you, to come out victoriously. In these battles of life, we don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are not fighting for victory. We are fighting from victory because there's a difference. You are already victorious. Yeah. You are a victorious child of God. So you stand on the platform of what Christ has given to you and then take what belongs to you. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So that is the news about what Christ has done for you. 
He came to empower you. He came to put his spirit in you to help you. Because we will always need the help of God. Yeah. God created us to depend always on him. So that we will have this relationship with him. That's why he created us. To have relationship with him. So we will always need divine help. We will always need the empowerment of God. And thank God that spirit of God is in you the day you give your heart to Christ. He came to dwell. He's not living in you. He said, Lord, I'm with you always to the end of the world. I'm not living. So he's there in you. So someone that is feeling that nobody is with me. Oh, I'm all alone in this world. No, Christ is in you. Yeah. You don't need everybody. You need Christ. Yes. All you need is the greater one in the inside. Because when you have Christ, you have everything. Glory. Hallelujah. I said, when you have Christ, you have everything. Amen. So what I was talking about this afternoon, Christ is the greater one. In case you don't know, Christ is the greater one that came to dwell in you, that came to reside in you the day you gave your heart to Christ. In 1 John chapter 4 that we read, please, I would love us to read it again. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. John the beloved was saying, ye are of God. Please, underline those words in your Bible. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Did you hear that? You've overcome you are already an overcomer. You, over, you have overcome. No matter what you are going through, you have already overcome it. It's a process that will pass. Yeah. Don't look at the, the, the immediate of what you are going through. Look at the long term. That what you are going through is a process. Because he said, Ye are of God, little children, and I've overcome them. You've overcome them. Can we take the words again? Ye are of God. What does it tell you? Ye are of God. What does that word mean to you? He said, ye are of God. Meaning, you are from God. You are from God. You emanate from him. You were begotten by him. You originate from God. You belong to God. That's why John the Beloved said, Ye are of God, which means you are from God. You belong to God. And listen, anyone born of God is God. Anyone born of God is God. Can you understand who you are in Christ? Anyone born of God is God. In Psalm 82 and verse 6, it says, Little children, ye are gods. Psalm 82 and verse 6. Psalm 82 and verse 6, he said, I have said, I have said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. Your father is the Most High. You can't afford to be most low. I have said, ye are gods and are children of the Most High. So your father is the Most High God. So where are you getting all that is all that you've been thinking about? Where are you getting it from? If your father is the most high, why are you behaving like the most low? Because he said, ye are gods. Ye are gods. You are children of the most high God. So the Bible clearly says that, that we belong to God. We emanate from him. We originate from him. Hallelujah. Can we quickly go to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4? See what John the Beloved says in that part of the scripture in verse 4. He says, For whosoever is born of God, please don't forget that anyone born of God is God. 
That's why that scripture says, For is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. As one born of God, don't live your life to the dictates of this world. Because you are born of God. Why are you aligning yourself to what this word says rather than what God's word says? Don't live your life to the dictates of this word. Because this word will pass away, but God's word will remain forever. Yeah. So live according to the precepts of God's word. Live according to what God says about you. Because the greater one is in you. Amen. Whosoever that is born of God overcomes the world. Can, can you get that? Overcomes the world. So therefore, live according to the conquering power that brings the world to its knees. You need to live according to the conquering power of the word of God, which is Jesus, that brought this word to his knees. Your faith should continue to rest in the greater one in you. Yeah. Your faith should continue to rest in the greater one that is in you. Stress this, but your faith should rest. In the greater one that lives in you. Not the things that is happening around you. Not the crisis. Not the pandemic. No. But your faith should rest in the greater one that lives in you. You have a greater one living in you. Glory. The almighty one is living in you. Amen. So Christ is not trying. Probably somebody is not understanding. Oh, uh, when did Christ get this greatness? Or oh, how is it great? Christ is not trying to be great. In order for you to understand this great one that lives in you, he is not trying to be great. He is not trying to be great. He's not speaking so that men will know that he's great. No. He has been before he created man. Hallelujah. Self existent one. Mm. The one that has no beginning, the one that has no end. So he is not trying to be great. To prove a point to you. Oh, 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 oh probably this word is coming to me. Oh, just to prove a point that God is great. No. That is who he is. Greatness is his character, Hallelujah. is his nature. It's not difficult to know a man. You know a man by what he does. The things he, he portrays, that's the way you know a man. So Christ is not trying to be great. Greatness is his nature. It's his character. He breathed greatness. Hallelujah. Thank you. He breathed greatness. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16, that about probably someone who understand better when we read that scripture to you. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. The scripture clearly puts it this way. Colossians 1 and verse 16, talking about who he is. He said, for by him we are all things made, or we're all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, or dominion, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him, and for him, and verse 17, and is before all things, and by him all things consist, and verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So that is who he is. He created all things. All things were created for him. In him all things consist. I love how David put it in Psalm 66 and verse 3. He says, say to God, how terrible are thy works. Say to God, how terrible are thy works. 
through the greatness of thy power, shall the enemy submit themselves unto thee. So he's not trying to be great, to prove a point to you. That is who he is. So when you understand who dwells in you, you'll be relaxed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So what are we talking about? Until we know who he is, we cannot find ourselves. Until we know who he is, we can't find our place. So that's why it's important for you to know who he is. It is important for you to know who is dwelling in you as one who has been born again. Because the day you know who dwells in you, You'll be bold as a lion that never turns back for any. The Bible said in Proverbs 30, there about, it said, the lion which is the strongest among beasts turned not back for any. So the day you know who dwells in you, you become bold as a lion. So the greater one lives in you, dwells in you. So the day you know who dwells in you, you find your place. You find your life. Because everything is centered on him. Our placement in life and destiny is in him. That's what I'm trying to say. Our placement in life and in destiny is in him. That is why it takes having the revelation of him to understand who you are and what you have. It takes revelation. It takes having revelation of who he is. Because if you don't have revelation of him, all that I'm saying would just be meaningless to you. But when you have revelation of who he is, then these words will begin to build up in you. It takes having revelation of who he is for anyone to understand who they are and what they have, what you are, and what you have, who you are, and what you have. Your identity is not what people see. Your true identity is the man or the person in you. That's your true identity. And it will take revelation that you've discovered from the scripture to know who you are, because in Christ we find who we are. We discover what we have. Hallelujah. Praise God. So revelation is important for the believer. You need to keep having, searching for revelation of Jesus Christ. Because the more of the revelation that you have of him, the more you live the life he has created for you. Revelation, which is knowledge, epignosis, Revelation, epignosis, meaning exact knowledge. Yeah. Exact knowledge. You need to have exact knowledge of him. Not the one they told you, the one you discovered by yourself in the process of research. Epignosis, exact knowledge, full knowledge. Yeah. Go for knowledge. If you want to know who you are, Go for knowledge of him. Because in knowing who he is, you will discover who you are and what he has given to you. Exact knowledge. Full knowledge. Colossians 1 and verse 9. Just open it up for us. Colossians 1 and verse 9. He said, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, did not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing, please get that very well, and increasing in the knowledge of God. So you need to keep increasing. Whatever you know about Christ yesterday is not enough. You need to keep increasing the knowledge. You need to keep searching. You need to keep discovering who he is. 
Paul the apostle said that I may know him. A man that wrote to Todd of the New Testament kept saying that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. You keep increasing in knowledge of him. You keep searching more about him. Because the more you know of him, the more you, you, you reign sweatlessly. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Second Peter, Peter was talking in 2 Peter 3 and verse 18. He said, but grow in grace. But grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we need to grow in grace. We need to grow in the knowledge of Christ. In searching the scriptures, Jesus told the Pharisees in John chapter 5 and verse 39, he says, search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. In it, you think you have eternal life because they are which that testifies of me. Search the scriptures. Open the scripture for yourself. Know God for yourself. Know him personally. A personal encounter will live forever. You cannot deny an encounter. You can deny a sign, but you cannot deny an encounter. Because when you have an encounter, it stays with you. Yes. So searching the scriptures to know who he is, is an encounter with the Savior. And what you discover stays with you. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. What a wonderful word. You, Grow in grace, beloved. Grow in grace. The opportunity we have, we should know Jesus more than we did yesterday. We should know more of him. Don't know about the world, but know about him. Because all the things that is happening will not save you. Will not increase your knowledge of him. But it's only the scripture that will increase your knowledge about him. Search the scriptures. Discover the word of God for yourself. Know the Bible for yourself. Hallelujah. Yes, so to manifest greatness and dominion on the earth, knowledge of him at your disposal or that is available to you is the key. To manifest and to have dominion on the earth because God has given us dominion on the earth. To have dominion on the earth, knowing him, having knowledge, having knowledge of him at your disposal or that is available to you is the key. It is not the kind of knowledge, I'm not talking about the kind of knowledge that is obtainable in, in school. Yes, it's good. But this is not the kind of knowledge that we're talking about. It is beyond the intellectual activity. This knowledge of Christ is beyond the, in, the activities that you find in the, in, the, in the four corners of higher institution. It is beyond that. But the kind of knowledge I'm talking about, the knowledge which comes by the oppression of the Holy Spirit upon acceptance of Christ. God. That's the kind of knowledge I'm talking about. The kind of knowledge which is oppressional by the Holy Spirit upon anyone that receives Christ into their heart. This knowledge comes by the Holy Spirit. As you keep searching the scripture, the Holy Ghost keep revealing to you Jesus. Because what the Holy Spirit does is to reveal Jesus to you. So any believer that doesn't have the Holy Spirit, there is something wrong. Because you need the Holy Spirit at all times to reveal Jesus to you. You can't know Jesus until the Holy Spirit reveals him to you. So that is why you need the Holy Spirit the walk or the race that we are in, we need the Holy Spirit to be able to run it successfully. Because Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Glory. He's coming soon. So for you to be among all that will be raptured, the Holy Spirit is one person you need. You need the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God. The Holy Spirit reveals Jesus to us. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Paul the Apostle says this. In verse 17. Ephesians 1 and verse 17. He said. 
that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Did you see that? In the knowledge of him. And because of this, verse 18, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, be rooted with light, glory. be flooded with light. Revelation is light. When you have light, you can't be in darkness. When you have light, you can't be walking in darkness like people who don't have light. There will be a distinction between people who have light and people who don't have light because of revelation. Thank you, Jesus. Revelation will always distinguish men on earth. Hallelujah. Praise that the God. eye of understanding be enlightened that ye may know, you see it, that ye may know, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sand. This is what the knowledge of Christ does to a believer. So it's important for us to keep searching, for us to keep looking into the world, into the law of liberty. According to James chapter 1, we keep searching about Jesus. Don't search about any man. Search about, search for Jesus yes, and see his work and his finished work. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit reveals Christ to us. He reveals Christ Jesus to us all the time. So when you understand or have a revelation of the greater one that is in you as a believer, it causes fear to dissipate. As a believer, when you have an understanding or a revelation of the one that dwells in you, it causes fear to go away. Fear would disappear when you have a revelation of Jesus Christ. The world is in tumult, or the world is in, in, in very critical condition because they don't have the light of God's word. But when we have the word, when we have the revelation of Jesus Christ, we will not be afraid. Yes. Because we know who we are. Yes. We know who lives in us. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the revelation of Jesus Christ, the revelation of the greater one that lives in you, will cause fear to disappear. And faith becomes emboldened in you. When you have revelation, your faith is emboldened. Your faith comes alive. I'm sorry to say this, but today a lot of believers are afraid because they are unaware of the one who lives in them. A lot of believers are afraid. What is happening? A lot of believers are afraid. The reason is because they, they are unaware of who lives in them. When you know who lives in you, fear will be a thing of the past. Fear will be a thing of the past. I love what a wise man said. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. When you tolerate fear, your faith will be contaminated. The reason why a lot of believers their faith is being contaminated right now is because they tolerated fear. They welcomed fear. They've allowed him into their heart. And that's why their faith has been contaminated. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can I end this by saying to act in fear is to think that the devil is greater than God. So don't ever act in fear. Because the devil can never be greater than God. No way. But that is what believers are exhibiting. They are acting in fear. And to act in fear is to think that the devil is greater than God. No way. Hallelujah. Praise God. But let me close with this. To be unaware of who lives in you is to become overwhelmed by trials and temptation. 
Oh, what, what are you saying? Are you saying they are not trials? They are. There are temptations everywhere. They are trials. Both. You've overcome. That's the thing. You've overcome. That's what makes you different. You've overcome. John 16 and verse 33, Jesus said, I say to you, in this world, you have trials, you have tribulations. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome for you. Yeah. I've overcome you, the world for you. Thank you Lord. There will be trials, there will be temptation. As long as you live on earth, there will be trials and there will be temptation. But what makes it not overwhelm you is because of the one that lives in you. Thank you Lord. Because there will be trials. That's why he said in that scripture, I have overcome the world for you already. He has already overcome the world for you. Jesus. Hallelujah. God. So understand this, that Christ has overcome the world for you. So therefore, embrace the reality of faith in Christ because it is what puts you in command above the affairs of this world. Amen. Embrace the reality of faith in Christ because it is what puts you in command above the affairs of this world. John chapter 3 and verse 31. He said, he that is from above is above all and have overcome all. He that is from above. Ephesians 2 and verse 6. He said, we are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. If you are seated with Christ, so where is all that is happening coming from? Where will it come from? You are seated with Christ. You are above and as long as you are above, you are above all. Hallelujah. You are above all. Thank you are above that circumstances. You are above that challenge that is, you think is insurmountable. You are above it yeah. because you are seated with Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Please, I came to encourage you this afternoon to know that the greater one lives in you. Yeah. And because he lives in you, nothing can stop you. Like the scripture we read from the beginning said, Ye are of God, little children. And I've overcome the world. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Please understand this. Because it's very vital for you. Salvation. And as you do this, you will see great wonders manifesting through you. Amen. Hallelujah. You. If all close this broadcast this afternoon, and you are there, you are not saved. Or you think, oh, what this man is saying is not, ah, he's not being real. I'm being real. I'm just telling you what Christ, what the word of God says. Until you are born into the family, you can't understand it. It takes one to be born in the family to understand what goes on in the family. And you say you want to give your heart to Christ. You've heard the word of God and the word of God is reminding you that you need to give your heart to Christ. And you are there, you want to pray this prayer. Please pray this prayer with me as we pray. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I've heard your word. I am a sinner. You died for me. To clean me from every unrighteousness. Jesus, come into my heart. Clean my heart. Wash me clean. I believe in my heart that you died for me. And on the third day, you were raised back to life for my justification. I confess the Lordship of Jesus over my life. You are my Savior and my Lord. From this day, my life will never remain the same. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just pray that prayer, I want to pray with you. Precious Father, thank you for these ones all over the world that have heard your word. That greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Lord Jesus, your grace has brought them. Let your grace keep them Amen. till the end in the name of Jesus. Amen. That the wicked one will not touch them. Amen. Their lives are preserved. They are kept in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because he said, whosoever that comes to you, you will in no wise cast out. Lord, their lives are preserved Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I believe you've been born again. Please look for a Bible believing church and fellowship with them. When the crisis is over, you can be blessed through uh, the church that has the word of God and your soul will be nourished because as newborn babes, you say, desire the sincere make of the world that you may grow thereby. So look for a Bible believing church after the crisis and then continue to fellowship and your life will never remain the same. It is very, very good to know that the greater one lives in you. I be believe me, that you are superior to the challenges that is happening right now because he lives in you Amen. and because he lives in you your future is great Amen. hallelujah Amen. what a wonderful way to close this broadcast today please join us all the time for god's word 
the undiluted word of God, the word of God that comes as raw as it is to tell you who you are in Christ and what you have in Christ. And your life will never remain the same. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please want to pray for our viewers all over the world. It's important for us to always pray for our viewers because the word of God will go ahead to keep you and to preserve your life. Father, we pray for our viewers all over the world. Precious Lord, let your hand keep them. Every one of our viewers, every one, Lord Jesus, that are yours, keep them and preserve them Amen. from all evil. Because he said, a thousand will fall at our side and ten thousand by our right hand side. It will never come near our dwelling. Your lives are preserved. Your families are preserved. All that concerns you are preserved. You will not fail. You will not stumble. You will not crumble. He that is able, he that you serve is able to keep you to the end in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone sick in their body, I cause that sickness from the root. I cause that sickness to die in the name of Jesus because it died so that you will have life and have life in abundance. Therefore, I declare that you are made whole from the crown of your head to the soul of your feet. Whatever challenge you are going through right now, I declare peace in the name of Jesus. Peace in the name of Jesus Christ. You are made whole Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. As we run on the brokers, please know that God loves you and He seek after your well-being. Amen. You are the one that He loves so well. Hallelujah. God. Until come your way, the kingdom of God is in, in you. you. Hallelujah. Amen. Ciao. Peace.